Greetings, and today on LGR, it's time to return to the year 2000. And we're doing so with this glaringly bright yellow doodad, the Cybico. It was a handheld computer designed for teens and tweens that sold for $149.99 on its US release in May of the year 2000. Although by the end of the year, it had dropped to $129, or a little bit less than a TI-89 graphing calculator. And yeah, the two devices are about the same size, shape, and weight, and both share a similar 160x120 resolution grayscale LCD 59 millimeters across, or just over two and a quarter inches. But that's about where the similarities end, because the Cybico is more than a programmable calculator. The Cybico had an antenna, ooh. And with it, the ability to wirelessly communicate with every other Cybico system nearby, letting kids do things like email, instant messaging, multiplayer gaming, download apps, and more. And all without Wi-Fi, SIM cards, or even a subscription or data plan of any kind. Simply turn it on, and there you go, you're on the Cybico Entertainment Network. Yeah, entertainment with an I. Mm. A portmanteau of entertainment and internet, or interactive, one imagines. Though it doesn't make it any less eye-rolling. The marketing overall is wildly of its time for this thing. Everyone was screaming back then. It's true. All the time, mouths wide open, non-stop screaming at all the cool tech coming out. And the Cybico tried real hard to be the absolute coolest. Claiming to be the future of communication and gaming, and it's here now. Bold words indeed. Literally, that's a bold typeface. And ambitions equally as bold, considering all the stuff it claimed to be capable of. Wireless chat, email, gaming, social networking, dating apps, productivity tools, free downloadable programs every single day, oh my gall. And we'll be testing every one of those in this video, from sending emails to multiplayer gaming, hooking up with other users, and going out on the town to connect to other Cybicos on the network and see if it lived up to the promises on the box. If nothing else, the media certainly ate it up back then, with copious TV, print, and web coverage, and no shortage of hyped up advertising. With the barrage of wireless communications devices, your kids could be better connected than you. The Cybico wireless entertainment system lets kids play games online, locate other kids within 300 feet that also have a Cybico. Cybico, a wireless entertainment device. Cybico offers PDA-like features, but a bill also provides a way to chat, instant message, play games, and email other Cybicos. Cybico. You get internet access, access games, games and stuff. And it's green. It's they got a lot of brain and for it. It. things. I'm excited about getting it. Now I can like talk to my friends. Owners can put in the kind of kid they are and the kind of kid they want to meet. When compatible kids converge, their Cybicos vibrate. Hey, dude, it's under $129. <laughs> Ah, that marketing. Sometimes I forget how much the early 2000s were still the 90s. I recommend this YouTube compilation of cyber coverage if you'd like to induce that turn of the millennium mood for better or worse. It was a wild time of fly-by-night startups and overnight dot-com millionaires where any new internet-related device or service might strike gold with the right rollout. And it's that environment that spawned Cybico Wireless Incorporated, headquartered in Bloomingdale, Illinois. On paper, at least. In reality, the founders and engineers all worked out of Russia, a fact the company didn't exactly hide so much as obfuscate when possible, reportedly out of concern that folks may not be receptive to a device developed in Moscow. It's a similar thing with the Cybico brand, a name that was chosen because the president of Cybico US figured it sounded vaguely Japanese and that kids would like the name since it, quote, sounds like some high-tech gadget out of Asia. As for the device itself, that was conceived by entrepreneur David Yang, who was most famous then for having founded Bit Software just over a decade prior. A company that was renamed Abbey in 1998, most well known for its fine reader optical character recognition software. It was that same year that the Cybico concept came about, with the goal being to create a handheld communication computer for young people that didn't break the bank. At the time, cell phones were still pretty costly, SMS texting hadn't yet gone mainstream, Bluetooth was still being formalized, and Wi-Fi chips were unfeasible for handhelds due to their size and power consumption. So the Cybico went with good old UHF radio in the range of 902 to 928 megahertz. 
Strong enough for two-way communication in close proximity, but not so strong as to interfere with most other devices and risk the FCC's wrath. There were all kinds of gadgets that used the 900 MHz band already, from walkie-talkies to cordless telephones, so it wasn't a big deal. But what made the Cybeco special was its blend of toy-like sensibilities with productivity and entertainment features that were typically only seen on more higher-end devices, and the fact that the more Cybecos were connected to each other, the larger the network could be. So there were claims that, oh, you could cover an entire school with Cybecos, or your whole mall, or a whole area of downtown block, or whatever. If there were Cybecos in range, then it extended the range of all the other Cybecos. And its other big selling point, <laughs> arguably at least, was its bonkers design with that wavy translucent plastic and garish color schemes. I've seen it described as a walkie-talkie made of cotton and candy, a Game Boy crossed with a PDA, a Palm 5 left in the sun too long, and a graphing calculator on acid. All are valid, and I commend everyone who tried to describe the thing back then. Because however you look at it, the Cybeco is a funky beast, and it'd never be mistaken for one of those hoity-toity PDAs. Now this thing screams, I'm for teens, I'm trying so hard to be cool. I'm cool, right, fellow kids? And it seems that at least 500,000 kids agreed, since that's how many units sold in its first year on the market, with worldwide sales reportedly into the millions by 2002. That being said, by 2003 the retroactively named Cybeco Classic had lost its luster and been discontinued, and its much-hyped successor the Cybeco Extreme, yeah, it didn't exactly make waves and sold far worse, with teens increasingly getting into cell phones and SMS texting by 2003, especially with affordable family plans and subsidized phones becoming the norm. That and the Cybeco's monochrome graphics were looking more dated and obsolete month to month. And while I don't have an extreme on hand, I do have a Cybeco Classic complete in box to look at today, so let's get to it. Right, so, inside this version of the Cybeco is a pile of goodies packed inside a molded plastic shell. Starting with a yellow sheet of paper going over the product return policy and instructions for downloading the latest Cybeco operating system and software. Next is the instruction manual filled with 78 black and white pages of instructional goodness covering all the basics, like setting up and using the pre-installed apps and customizing the device with new programs and personal info. All of which we'll get to here soon enough. Lastly, there's the Cybeco itself, with rechargeable batteries pre-installed from the factory, along with two cables, one for power and the other for connecting to a Windows PC via 9-pin serial. Yeah, enough with the flippant fondling, let's turn it on and bask in the neon yellow Cybeco experience of the year 2000. Yeah, look at that little display doing its thing. No backlighting, a slow refresh, a whole four shades of gray to work with. Lovely. And yeah, the system powers on and off by holding the escape button, at least on this model. The launch models, like this one, actually have a physical power on and off button instead, over on the left. They also hold a bit less in terms of data storage, with a few hundred kilobytes on the launch model Cybecos and a full 512k on the later ones. Other than that, functionality is the same. You navigate using this squishy D-pad, interact with games and programs using the squishy keys to the right of that, and there's a row of shortcut buttons above the LCD with a full QWERTY keypad down below. And yes, the keys are absolutely tiny and just as mushy as all the others, which is not a great combination. For that reason, it actually comes with a plastic stylus. Not for touching the screen, it's not a touch screen. Instead, it's for pressing down those tiny little keyboard keys one by one. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I find it slightly more tolerable to just mash things in with my thumbs. It's no Blackberry Pearl, but it gets the job done. Around the left-hand side, you've got a recessed reset switch, a connector for the serial cable, and a jack for the 6-volt power supply. And underneath is where you'll find the speaker, battery compartment, and your Cybeco ID. Each unit came with a unique seven-character serial number that identifies you on the network and can't be changed. Back here is also where you access the antenna, an omnipresent feature on mobile devices of the year 2000. And it's not one that extends upward, but rather bends out and then around the top of the device. And yes, it's an actual aerial, not just a plastic placebo. This one actually snapped apart, so hey, check it out. That bit of copper actually connects physically to the radio transceiver inside. 
Another thing I was pleased to see is this expansion port at the bottom, normally hidden away by a plastic cover. And if that 68-pin connector looks familiar, well, that's because it's a standard PCM-CIA Type 1 slot. At least physically, since as far as I know, it doesn't recognize standard PC card communication without some modification. There were several things planned for this, but to my knowledge, only two came out. A 1 meg memory expansion module and the Cybeco MP3 player. I don't have the former, but the latter is absolutely here in my hands right this very moment. It's a pretty excellent little addition to the Cybeco, honestly, adding physical playback buttons, MP3 decoding capabilities, and smart media flash storage for holding your music. An absolute necessity since even a single 128K BPS MP3 is typically twice as large as the Cybeco's entire built-in storage. However, even getting the basic Cybeco experience with or without MP3 playback is kind of a crapshoot over two decades later. Of the four Cybeco's I've had in my possession, all four arrived in need of repair, including the one still unused in its box. Each unit was either partially defective or fully dead for the same reason, battery leakage. Cybeco's rely on 1.2 volt, 700 milliamp hour nickel metal hydride rechargeables known as gumstick batteries, which were installed from the factory, and they're almost guaranteed to leak, even if the units never turned on. Now, luckily, none of my Cybeco's were beyond repair, with the battery compartment and contacts simply needing a little white vinegar applied to the leakage, all the corrosive junk scraped out, and then wiped with isopropyl alcohol so the contacts are clean. And that's usually not enough, though, since the crap gets down onto the PCB and screws up the underside of the contacts and where they touch the board. Even after vinegar scraping and alcohol, there's a chance the pads will have suffered some nasty corrosion. The same goes for wiring that's just below the battery compartment, which connects both the internal speaker and the vibration motor. The corrosion actually killed a couple of the motors and one of the speakers on mine. No surprise, since they're so close to the batteries. But yeah, just get the contacts touching a clean part of the pads on the PCB and you can install new batteries. And finding replacements is easy. Search for 1.2 volt F6 batteries. They were used in tons of handheld and portable devices throughout the 2000s, with most being higher capacity 800 milliamp hour sticks. Only problem is the positive terminals are a little shorter than the originals and don't quite make contact inside, so I simply bent the metal inward about a millimeter and that did the trick. I've now got four restored Cybeco's with fresh batteries, each lasting between 6 and 15 hours on a full charge, depending on what you're doing. And the first thing you'll be doing out of the box is personalizing the device, beginning by entering a nickname to be seen by other Cybeco users as well as inputting your gender and age, followed up with an About Me section. This consists of your main goal in using the Cybeco, your height and weight, and up to three hobbies from a predetermined list of super cool kid turn-of-the-century activities. Rollerblading, skateboarding, internet, computers, girls, boys, skydiving, chess, BMX, yeah! There are also three secret fields that aren't shown publicly, but will signify to others who enter the same secrets that you're part of a secret cool club of cool secret hobbies. Next, you'll fill in the confusingly titled About You section, which isn't about you, but the people you want to meet. It's all the same info as before, except you're entering the type of person you're interested in meeting. And there's also something called My Sci Page, which is a separate profile to fill in with custom text in case the other profile didn't fully convey your awesomeness. You can even add a highly dithered monochrome profile pic if you connect it to a PC, which we'll do later on. Lastly, there's the business card section, since as we all know, kids are super into handing out business cards. It even has a watermark. This digital card lets users share even more personal info, like their real first and last name, phone number, email address, and ICQ number. Remember those? Uh -oh. And finally, you're ready for cyberspace. Mmm, how exciting. And this is it. Welcome to cyberspace. Or really, Cybeco space, since the Cybeco cannot actually connect to the internet on its own. On the main desktop, there's the aforementioned you and me stuff, wireless instant messaging, an email app, productivity things, some pre-installed games, and a settings menu. Most of the options are self-explanatory, letting you set a password, change sound and vibration intensity, adjust the display and notification settings, all that stuff, nothing too exciting. And really, that sums up the whole experience, if you're on your own. 
using a Cybeco by yourself is pretty underwhelming, since out of the box it's little more than a neon-infused personal organizer with a few PDA-like apps built in. Things like a notepad for daily journaling and jotting down your millennial thoughts and dreams, a personal organizer for organizing tasks personally in an organized fashion, a simple and rather underwhelming calculator application, no graphing included, a bizarrely titled app called Study Stools that helps keep track of school assignments separated by subject and perhaps the condition of your colon, an address book Rolodex type thing for storing info on all the cool cyber kids you've met, a basic file manager that doesn't work nearly as well as just hooking it up to a PC, though it is quite useful for sharing files and apps wirelessly with other Cybeco users. And finally, the Music Composer, which reminds me of those classic feature phone ringtone makers where each button emits a tone and it plops down notes sequentially. And of course, each Cybeco came preloaded with games, although the exact games you got and how many depended on which version of the OS was installed. Mine came with eight titles, or really seven of them since one of them is simply an ad for a downloadable game. That being Scylandia, which was a virtual pet slash life simulation kind of thing. Nothing can be played here, unfortunately, but the idea seems fun enough. And yeah, all the other included games are fully playable, assuming that is, you'd actually want to play them. You've got Reversi, which is Reversi, or Othello for the cultured among you. 8-Ball, which is your bog-standard billiards game. Pinball Pro, which doesn't exactly measure up to the professional moniker, but is otherwise fine. There's a breakout clone with a bunch of toilet paper rolls, amusingly titled Men's Room 2. There is no Men's Room 1, to my knowledge. Also on here is Cybeco Superbike, a straightforward hang-on style arcade racing game. Then there's NSC Blazing Boards, which actually ain't half bad. Skateboarding with tricks and jumps and stuff, a staple of gaming back then and you love to see it. And finally, Lost in Labyrinth, one of the primary games advertised to show off the system's capabilities. And well, it's one of those 3D maze games like you got in the early days of personal computing. You move in four directions, cell by cell, through a series of mazes in search of treasure while being hunted by brain-dead enemies you can shoot. Yeah, it's fine, but Wolfenstein this ain't, and it sure would have felt antiquated in the year 2000. However, if you've got another Cybeco nearby, things begin to get interesting, because all Cybecos support wireless multiplayer gaming, including Lost in Labyrinth. And I mean, yeah, it's still the same mind-numbingly slow maze game in the end, but just knowing there's another real person out there exploring the same maze is immediately more engaging, especially since you can shoot the crap out of each other. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you killed me dead or faster. You were shooting me before I even turned around. Yeah. And we still ended up killing each other. That's bogus. It's too bad the game is terrible, otherwise it risks being fun for more than a minute. <laughs> and it only gets worse with some of the other games. Playing pool with other people wirelessly is quite novel, but the response time is so slow and the controls are so cumbersome that it takes ages for the Cybercos to sync up to one another. I assume because of the pool ball physics, but still, it's awful. Really the best case scenario are turn-based card and board games, like Reversi here. You each input moves one at a time, and there's not a whole lot to change on screen with each move, so the action, such as it is, stays swift and responsive. Now, this would have been a godsend on long road trips if, say, you and your sibling both had a Cybeco and wanted to play board games in the backseat without stuff sliding around or bothering with magnetic pieces. Not to mention the communication stuff. Ah, man, when you don't want parents or teachers listening in, wireless chat is way more fun than passing notes. And it's super easy to connect, since whenever another powered on Cybeco is in range, a notification automatically pops up on top of whatever you're doing, letting you know there's a person nearby. And how many interests you share, signified by hearts, tying into the whole dating aspect. Yeah, depending on your about me and about you details, every other Cybeco user is rated in hearts up to a maximum of three. At this point, you can look up their profile, download their picture, and request a chat session. There's also a friend finder applet within Psy Community, which helps narrow down your potential partners based on their information. There's also an email app, but <laughs> it's less useful than it sounds. 
Remember, the Cybico can't go online on its own, so what you do here is write emails to be sent later from an internet-connected PC. Or you can pose emails directly to others on the local network using their Cybico ID. In other words, exactly the same capability as instant messaging, but without the whole instant part. Another option is setting up a Cygate, their form of wireless internet connection sharing. This required an internet-connected PC and at least two Cybicos, where you'd connect one system via serial using Cywig mode. Once that was online, other nearby Cybicos could connect wirelessly and send actual emails through your PC. Nifty stuff, but a lot of hoops to jump through. Really, it's the group chat feature that's the most enjoyable communication option in my view, acting as a kind of proto-discord for anyone with a Cybico. Everyone's free to type at each other simultaneously, whether or not you found a three-heart match or have anything in common at all. This would have been fantastic during lunchtime or study hall back in the day. Ah, such missed opportunities. And I mean that on multiple levels because in my experience, the actual wireless capabilities were a tad overstated. The documentation repeatedly claims a 150-foot range indoors with a maximum 300-foot range outside, at least with this model here. But still, even 300 feet per Cybico would be awesome, especially since each one on the network acts as a repeater, creating an ad hoc network. This patented range extension was supposed to be its killer feature, one discussed over and over in the marketing. So if Unit A connected to Unit B and Unit C connected to B, then Unit D in range of C could then connect to Unit A and so on, creating a kind of mesh net of Cybicos. Theoretically, you could blanket a pretty wide area, with up to 100 units on each of the 30 available channels able to communicate at once. That's 3,000 Cybicos. While I can't say I have 3,000 of them, I do have three with working radios, so I took a trip a while back to see my brother Luke so we could endure the Cybico experience together and see just how far away we can get them to communicate. After some late morning coffee and a while spent getting his Cybico profile all set up, our first test involved wandering the streets of downtown Raleigh, with the goal being to see how far we could walk while still being able to see each other and chat on the network. And well, <laughs> it uh, wasn't quite 300 feet, I can tell you that. Even the promised indoor range of 150 feet would have been nice, but nope. Even a block away, our Cybicos couldn't talk at all. So we kept walking towards each other until... Nothing, nothing, nothing. Still? There it is. So this isn't quite 300 feet. That's not quite 300 feet. Yeah, the farthest we got outdoors was maybe six feet, or round about two meters, and that's after trying a half dozen times in different spots with different Cybicos, both at street level and up above. Like even in the middle of a wide open parking lot on top of a building, the communication range was laughably small. At least adding a third Cybico between the other two really does double the range. It's just that in this case, that meant taking it from 6 feet up to a whopping 15 or so. We... Even with brand new batteries and systems that work fine in every meaningful way, we never managed to chat across so much as one city block. Alright, so verdict on the Cybico's wireless range. What range? It's not quite 300 feet. Or even 150 feet indoors. No, we're outdoors and I think we got maybe a tenth of that. 15 feet, maybe. It's great if you're standing right beside each other, though. <laughs> now, I assume we were simply running into radio interference on the 900 megahertz spectrum, but regardless, the result was comically bad. Especially considering how much they touted its wireless capabilities in urban areas. And my interference hypothesis was backed up somewhat after realizing we got better reception inside my hotel room than anywhere downtown. We were able to chat and play games from one corner of the room to the other, no problem. And even when walking down the hallway a bit, things kept communicating. But we still lost reception after maybe 50 feet or about 15 meters. <laughs> even back here at home in my own testing in the middle of a park, results haven't improved. So whatever the source of the problem may be, wireless Cybico usage here in 2021 is overwhelmingly underwhelming. 
By the way, thanks again to Luke for tagging along for the experience, and do check out his own YouTube channel with a focus on film photography and related shenanigans he gets up to over there. And hey, maybe give him a sub, I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Anyway, yeah, the Cybico. The wireless side of things may be a tad disappointing, but at least you got free apps every day. A huge selling point for the system and a solid strategy to keep customers coming back. It did require an existing internet connection since the apps were downloaded through Cybico web servers, but still, an awesome option. And they also sold collections of apps on CD-ROM, though I don't know if they ever released more than one. But what I do know is there were nearly a thousand programs made for the system before it was discontinued. And thankfully, a huge chunk of them have been archived online. All you need is the serial cable, a compatible Windows PC, and the Cybico auto-update and cyberload software. The former checks for memory integrity and makes sure you have the latest SciOS installed, and the latter is where you can manage all the files on your system and transfer new data. Naturally, the Cybico servers are long dead, but so long as you have the right app files, you can still drop them onto the device. Slowly. <laughs> the serial connection here maxes at, I believe, 9600 baud, or just over one kilobyte per second. So slow that they actually included a minigame to play during file transfers, a puzzle game called Branch. <laughs> I mean, hey, if it's gonna be sluggish, then you may as well include a Pipe Dream clone, so kudos for that. Cyberload is also where you transfer photos to use as a profile pic, using the converter feature that lets you crop, adjust brightness and contrast, and change the dithering pattern. That photo option only applies to the Cybico Extreme, you can only use the four-color palette for the Cybico Classic. As for the kind of games you got, well, <laughs> keep in mind there's only about 328 kilobytes of internal storage, even after removing everything pre-installed. Plus, most people were still on dial-up back then, so the downloadable games and apps are all really small. This means that a lot of the games give me a kind of Action 52 vibe, if you get my drift. Bunches of basic puzzle games and board games, little shooters and action games, simple platformers, arcade knockoffs, button mashing, endurance challenge things, eh, you know. Considering you got a new one every day and never had to pay a dime, I guess you can't complain. But if you weren't impressed by the initial offering of pre-installed software, I can't imagine these would make you a believer all of a sudden. And that being said, of course, I would have loved this in the year 2000. Even with that slow, dim, low-res LCD, the fact that you could download games and drop them onto a handheld device was mighty appealing. Sure, everything's limited by that 11 MHz Hitachi H8S2241 processor inside, but whatever, I would have been thrilled to have this as a youngin. But I didn't. And now I'm in my mid-30s playing games intended for 12-year-olds that objectively weren't very good even 20 years ago. Eh, whatever, at least you haven't turned off this video, and that means I can pay the bills. Unlike Cybico, which crashed and burned after a couple years, and the product line was killed off in 2003. Sad. And that's even despite appearing in the movie Big Fat Liar, starring Frankie Muniz and multiple Cybicos. Hmm, Malcolm in the middle of a mesh net? <laughs> One can only hope they had better reception than my brother and I got. But yeah, as fascinating as I think the Cybico is, it's no surprise it withered on the vine like it did. And when it did. The year 2000 was a moment in history right before the whole world changed, on both social and technological levels, and the Cybico really could have only existed exactly then. It made sense for about a year and a half before it was completely sidelined by subsidized cell phones and affordable family plans. And the Cybico Extreme in 2002 was DOA with that bulky walkie-talkie calculator appearance. An uncool look compared to more pocketable phones and PDAs. Yeah, it cost less, but without a wireless modem, it wasn't nearly enough. Especially at a time when text messaging was exploding, and web browsers were taken off like a certified freak seven days a week. Cybicos increasingly looked like a teenage version of those grown-up toys for toddlers, with bulky rounded plastic and functionality that only mimicked what adults had. It's both impressive and embarrassing at the same time, depending on which aspects of the device you're looking at. And for that reason, I think it's a lot of fun to look back on, play around with, and revisit that sliver in time where a mobile device for tweens actually kinda made sense. And no doubt made a few 2000s kids utterly stoked to have one.
And I hope you enjoyed this LGR retrospective. Let me know if you've had any Cybeco experiences in the comments, good or bad, and check out my other videos on retro handhelds, or stick around for new videos weekly here on LGR. As always, thanks for watching.